here we have an integral from 2020 Berkeley integration b, which is the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over 10 plus 6 cosine data d data. Now here I highly encourage you to pause the video and try doing this on your own, um, just so you have something to aim for. The participants had 4 minutes to do this problem for the semi-final. Now the solution I want to present to you is a really pretty one using a concept of a winding number. And to understand what a winding number is all about, let's say we have a unicircle on the complex plane. So this is a unicircle and let's say we traverse it counterclockwise once, getting us a path gamma. And let's imagine we have a point inside the cycle called A. So this is A some complex number. And now we're going to consider an integral, integral along this path gamma of 1 over z minus a dz. And you may be wondering, why are we even considering this? Well, just trying to evaluate this informally should persuade you why this integral is so important. Well, to start with, well, this has to be the change in the antiderivative, and the antiderivative is log of z minus a, or so you may presume. And this change in the function is really given by starting our z at, say, z equals to 1, and then our z is going to rotate around the unit circle until it gets back to the initial place, and we are finding the change in the logarithm. And now, how do you evaluate a logarithm of a complex number? Well, let's say we are taking log of some complex number w, where w on the complex plane, so if this is 0, and this is w, is going to have some magnitude. So here w has magnitude absolute value of w, and w is also going to have some angle, or the argument, data. So another way of thinking about w as a complex number is that it has magnitude absolute value of w, and it's e to the i times the angle, which is argument of w. So when I take logarithm of this expression, so when I take log of w, that's going to be log of absolute value of w times e to the i times argument of w. So this should turn out to be logarithm of absolute value of w plus i times argument of w. So that's telling us that this change in logarithm of z minus a, this has to be change in logarithm of absolute value of z minus a plus i times change in the argument of z minus a. And now the thing to realize is that when you look at the change in the absolute value, well, z minus a is this vector that's pointing from a to z. And certainly, once z circles around once, then absolute value of z minus a is going to be exactly the same as it was at the start, so the change of this is going to be zero. Whereas, when we consider the change in the argument, well, the angle, the cumulative angle that we accumulate as z winds around, well, this, this can be non-zero. And in fact, we see that as z winds around, the angle is changing, the angle of this vector that's pointing from a to z is exactly changing by 2 pi because we are winding around a single time. So you may expect this integral to evaluate to 2 pi i, and this is exactly true. On the other hand, what if we have the same setup? So what if we have the unit circle and we are just rotating around? But our point A lies far outside. So A is lying outside the unit circle. Then what is the integral? of 1 over t minus a dz in this case, where we're integrating around the unit circle. Well, remember that this integral was i times the angle by which we were rotating or winding about a. But in this case, we're not rotating around a at all. You're rotating around this point, but that doesn't matter too much. What we want to do for us to accumulate an angle is if we rotate around a like this. But that's not what's happening. We're just moving wobbling far off in the distance from A. So in this case, the cumulative angle ought to be zero, and this happens to be true, so the integral actually evaluates to zero. To summarize the discussion here, when the point A is lying inside, then we have a winding number of one, whereas when the point A is lying outside the circle, we have a winding number of zero, and that's reflected in the values of the integrals. Now let's get on to actually evaluating this integral. The first thing to realize is that here data is changing from 0 to pi, and that can be seen to correspond to the fact that if we have our unit circle once again, 
and we have our c is equal to e to the i data which is lying an angle of data above the positive x-axis then data changing from 0 to pi corresponds to the fact that our z in this unit circle is rotating from 0 to pi but to apply the concept of a winding number we really we really want to rotate all the way around from data equals to 0 to 2 pi and that's not too hard to achieve here because if we think about what the graph of cosine of data looks like from 0 to 2 pi well it looks something like this where there is a clear symmetry about pi and I leave it up to you to more rigorously justify this but this symmetry forces this integral to be just one half times integral from 0 to 2 pi of the same thing and now something to realize is that if you look at cosine data and z is rotating about the unit circle about this past gamma that we were talking about before then cosine data is clearly just the real part of this z of e to the i data and because 1 over z so this is 1 over z where z is on the unit circle has the same real part as z but the opposite imaginary part we see that cosine of data is actually same as a z plus 1 over z divided by 2 so substituting that right into cosine data we see that this gets us 1 half times integral along this gamma as z is rotating around of 10 plus 6 times z plus 1 over z over 2 and what about d data well z is e to the i data so that in particular is telling us by differentiating both sides that dz is equal to i times e to the i data d data another way of saying it is it's i times z d data because e to the i data is same as z so that's telling us that d data is same as 1 over i z times dz so how do we go about evaluating this well to start with let's get this 1 over i outside and we can multiply by z to top and bottom to get rid of this z and to get rid of 1 over z inside here so distributing everything in gets us 1 over 2i times integral along gamma of dz divided by 10z plus 6 divided by 2 is 3 and we have z plus 1 over z times z which gets us z squared plus 1 so that gets us 3z squared plus 3 and it's not too hard to see that this can in fact be factored very easily so this is just 1 over 2i times integral along gamma of the expression 3z plus 1 times z plus 3 now we're almost there this almost looks like an expression we want for the winding number where we have something like integral of gamma of dz over z minus some complex number a and there is an easy way of putting this integral into this form and that's by using partial fraction so i will skip the boring steps if you go through with the partial fraction you are going to find that 1 over 3z plus 1 times z plus 3 is actually equal to 3 over 8 over 3z plus 1 minus 1 over 8 divided by z plus 3 i will leave it up to you to just check this and we can divide by 3 to top and bottom here to put the denominator in the form z plus 1 third and doing all of that is going to get us the following so this integral is now going to turn out to be 1 over 2i times integral along gamma dz over the expression 1 over 8 divided by z plus 1 third minus 1 over 8 divided by z plus 3 just rewriting it one more time we get the following and now to finish recall that if we consider the unit circle once again when we have an expression of the form z plus one third in the denominator that's the winding number about negative one third so here we're winding around once so remember that gets us two pi where we get where we have i times the change in the argument and in this case negative three is way outside the unit circle so here the winding number is zero so putting everything together that gets us that the, our final integral is just 1 over 16i times 2 pi i which is pi over 8 so going all the way back up we found using winding number that this integral evaluates to pi over 8